Welcome. I'm Harmony Slater, your host of the Finding Harmony podcast. Over the past 20 years, I've taught thousands of yoga teachers and students to explore the intersection between ancient wisdom and modern everyday life, using mind-body practices to heal, awaken, and manifest their dreams from the inside out. This podcast is a sanctuary for those feeling overwhelmed by life's challenges. Are you ready to jump in and discover how these challenges aren't actually in the way, but are the way to finding harmony? Let's invite the magic back in. Well, hello. Welcome to the Finding Harmony podcast. I'm your host, Harmony, and today we are interviewing a dear friend of mine, someone I met through the Ashtanga Yoga practice while I was teaching in Bosnia. And he opened up his heart and his hotel, and we started having an annual Turkish yoga retreat at his hotel. And so you're going to hear the story of how we met, also the story of his practice journey, and just dive into enjoying his Turkish charm. We're talking about all things Turkey, some of the nuances to the cultural aspect of Turkey, some of the misconceptions, as well as some of the joys of going and practicing in this beautiful location in Alachati. So we are talking to Shevkit. You might also know him as Recep. Uh, he's a wonderful human being with a big, big heart, and he has this gorgeous boutique hotel that is right in the heart of Alachati, a cute little Mediterranean town on the Aegean Sea, which is very close to Greece. Alachati has been described as Western Turkey's heaven on earth by CNN Travel, and it's just a beautiful secret location in Turkey that is gorgeous with the sea there, some mountains, these beautiful towns that are all cobblestone streets and hotels and houses and shops that are all made of stone. It's just a gorgeous area, very close to the ancient city of Ephesus and a short boat ride away from some of the Greek islands. So you can enjoy shopping in the local Mediterranean markets. Uh, They have a lot of natural hot springs in this area. It's just really, really beautiful. So we're going to talk a little bit about what it's like to visit Alachati, what it was like for him to grow up in this area, as well as the practice of yoga and his experience practicing yoga with Saraswati, as well as another teacher in Mysore, and also now Sharat Joyce. So he has quite the journey, and it's going to be a really beautiful conversation that I can't wait to dive into. And if you would like to know more about how to spend 10 days with me this July, July 1st to the 10th, in this beautiful Mediterranean location in Turkey, where it is very cost effective to come and enjoy and shop and be and relax and connect with yourself. You can find out all the information on my website, harmonyslater.com forward slash yoga dash retreat dash turkey. Send me a DM and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. It's an all-inclusive retreat. You just need to pay for flights and transportation to the hotel. And otherwise, uh, everything else pretty much besides maybe a few outings. And if you decide to eat dinner out, you know, of course, is included. So we're looking forward to welcoming you into this beautiful retreat setting. And I hope that you love this interview with Shevkin. Hi, welcome to the Finding Harmony podcast. I'm your host, Hi. Harmony. Hi, how are you? Shevkin Rajiv. Hi, <laughs> Harmony, Russell, good to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you, you. You share a name with the leader of Turkey. You have the same name. Actually, my second name is Recep. His first name is Recep. So, so like, okay, we're sharing the same name, but not in the same spot. So he's like Recep Tayyip Erdogan, me, Shevket, Recep Üstün. So he's, he's usually using Tayyip. I'm usually using Recep. But of course, it's both same. Does that mean that you're cousins? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are that cousin. I don't want to be a relative with that guy. You know? Oh, oh <laughs> we got that on. Oh, we got that recorded. But so mm-hmm. in Turkey, do you typically go by your second name then, not your first name? I mean, it depends on you. Uh, when you start, uh, when you're born, uh, they give you those names, right? So then when you get aged like six, seven years old, they start calling with something. So my family choose to call me Recep all the time. So I got used to Recep. But sometimes people still calling me Shevket also. I'm okay. So it's good to have too, you know? I mean, yeah. you can sw- <laughs> switch sometimes, you know? Like you can be a different person. <laughs> yeah, I like it. No one would ever call us by our middle names. Don and Altus. That'd be a completely different show. <laughs> that would be a Don and Altus. Show. Finding Don. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Shevket is more calm. Recep is more aggressive uh, part of me. Is it? We can say that. When they call me Shevket, I feel really different, you know? When they call me Recep, I feel different. I don't know why. It's like, you know, maybe they don't call it the, the both at the same time. That's why when they call me Shevket, because some people pick Shevket, so they they're totally different type of people. <laughs> Some people think Recep, but they different people. Yeah, you know. So it's that's so funny. It's interesting. I want to ask you a question. I don't. I don't want to embarrass you or put you on the spot. We we. I just got a phone call from Robbie Cavallero, who's who's been on the show before. We called him the the Mysore aristocrat. Is that what we called him? The, the aristocrat of Mysore. <laughs> And I don't know if you know Ravi, but he is um, something like. Um, He's like uh, a duke or something. No? He is. Uh, he is Italian royalty, and his his you know his great uncle was a famous uh, field general, field marshal, Hugo Cavallero. And we have his hat upstairs for some reason. But um, very very old family and. I, I feel like the vibe I get from talking with Shevkit is a kind of similar vibe. I have a feeling that there's like an old family, an old story there. Turkish royalty? Turkish royalty, like Persian, <laughs> you know, Persian royalty, you know, going all the way back to Xerxes and the, and, uh, Pers- you know, Persepolis and the whole, like, do, is that a vibe that, does that, do you recognize that at all? you mean the my family like yeah father, family. Grandfather. basil i mean actually all the my, way back. my father uh, comes from north part of turkey and they were living in a small village in the north part of turkey so my father got like eight uh, brothers and sisters Wow! They all uh, engineers, and they all studied university. And only my father was the youngest one. So when I was a kid, my cousins were like, I remember I was like nine years old, ten years old. My youngest cousin was like thirty-five. <laughs> so you know, so they were like the same age, like my mom almost. Yeah, you know. So my mom was the last one, and uh, my father was the last one. And actually, he got the mo- most successful one in the family. Yeah. So then he moved to Ankara, Istanbul in young age, and he started doing his own business. And he got really successful and he made like, but it's like a village family. But my mom's side is totally different. My mom's uh, grandfather, he was a big businessman. They were already settled down in a big city. My uh, mom grew up. You know, in a different way, she was like more uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, comfortable than my uh, father's side. Yeah. Yeah. My mom is more, my mom is like more kind of that type. She's know? like a Stabs modern it. city girl. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She was, I, she was very independent. Think about like 19. Is uh, 68 something like she starts uh, studying university, I think. And wow. uh, she moved to Ankara as an independent girl. She was st- staying alone. So her uh, father, he encouraged her to move. I mean, it was that time, it's still in Turkey. Uh, not many families, they supporting girls to be alone in other cities. But in that time, it's kind of like impossible. So my mom was like super lucky. 
her father was like a super open-minded person and educated and, and wealthy guy. So I'm sorry I couldn't see both. So grandfather, both sides, my mom's side, that they were really old guys. And when I was born, they already passed. So I was not lucky in that side, but I saw my both my mom and grand from my father's side and my mother's side. So not like like a hundreds of years in the Ottoman Empire or anything like that. I mean, it's so hard to find in Turkey because uh, we don't have uh, datas coming from uh, 19th centuries too much. You have to go to government sign and dig and dig too much to see what's going on. If you go to website of the government, they put something. I checked a little bit, but uh, I mean, I couldn't find anything before 19th century too much. Oh, okay. Because of a lot of wars, all the information gone in Turkey. You know, it's so many things passed in this uh, land uh, in that time. We had like First World War, Independence War, like so many things has destroyed. So that's why Turkish people, it's so hard to know where we are coming from. I might be a Russian mix. I might be an Arab, Arabic mix. I might be an even Greek mix, by the way. <laughs> so yeah. They all mixed up here in Turkey. I see the resemblance between the two of us. Harmony often refers to me as an Arab. And just like, so I think maybe the two of us, if you look at our profiles, there is something similar going on with the way that we, we look. <laughs> That's the interesting thing about Turkey, though. And I think like you're so passionate about Turkey. You're always the to me, the like um, iconic, like Turkish lover of all things Turkish. Yeah. You're so patriotic to your homeland. It's like one of the oldest, I guess, civilizations and really like a uh, like main place for many great people. And many ancient civilizations, too, like made that their home, right? I mean, the, that's Anatolia, uh, where everything was born. So Turkish people, we came to Anatolia. That land is in the 15th century. No, no, first word, uh, first war, it's called Malazgit War. It was like 10th century, beginning of the 10th century. Turkish people start moving to the that side because we are coming from Middle Asia, originally, very close to India, by the way. Most of the Turk civilizations was like very close to India. So the main reason Indian people uh, has this Muslim religion, probably because of some uh, also Turkish, in that time, Turkish uh, wars happened in this part of the world also. That's why maybe because I, I'm not sure, but I'm think because of that. So Anatolia is, has a lot of Lydians, Sumerians, I don't know how they call it in English, but so many civilizations passed in that land. And this uh, Byzantium Empire was the last one before the Ottoman Empire. So they were located in Istanbul. And Istanbul was the capital of Byzantium Empire. So Turkish Ottoman, Ottoman is a family emperor, by the way. They're not like 100%, we can't call them Turkish. So they mixed up a little bit also. Yeah. So that's why we don't want to call ourselves like an, coming from Ottoman Empire because Ottoman means Ottoman son. So Ottoman is the name Osman, uh, who is the founder of the Ottoman Empire. And that guy's family. So we can say that all Turkish people coming from Ottoman Empire. So Ottoman Empire is one of the Turkish empire and influenced uh, by uh, Muslim religion. Before Muslim religion, Turkish people was shamanic. So be, uh, if we go to 10th century, 9th century, 8th century, it's most of the Turkish people was shamanic. So the Ottoman Empire picked to be a Muslim. And they start having war with uh, the other civilization in the... Anatolia, then the Prophet Muhammad said, there is a saying, if you Google it, you can say that Ottoman, uh, because Prophet Muhammad has lived in uh, 7th century, 6th century in an Arabic island. So 
he pointed to Istanbul. So who is going to get to Istanbul from Byzantine Empire? Because Byzantine Empire was a Christian, right? So he will get the God power, uh-huh. something like that. So he pointed and he targeted to Istanbul. So that's why Ottoman Empire, when they came to Anatolia, they picked the Muslim. So the Ottoman Osman and the rest of the sultans, their first target was Istanbul. When they got to Istanbul, you know, the era changed. So we were at the middle age to go to the new age, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like very important something because Istanbul was the uh, probably the most modern city in that time. So that's why we can call ourselves, yeah, we can call ourselves like, you know, Ottoman. So let's say Turkish, but Ottoman is kind of just from family. Yeah, it's like a family lineage, not necessarily like a yeah. whole nation. <laughs> it, it was inter- we were just learning on the History Channel about the Swedish Vikings who went down the river to Constantinople and to Istanbul and were, you know, invading. And they were called the Rus. And the Rus then kind of populated Siberia and became Russia. And I was like, well, wow, that's, you know, so there's there's all sorts of mixing going on. but. I'm kind of convinced that's where my name, that's where that comes from. In Russia, Crimea, I mean, uh, we have like so many Turkish civilizations also in Russia. They, their eyes look, look like a yeah, Korean, yeah, yeah. Chinese, let's say yeah. like, you know, they, they, they not like uh, Turkish people who is living in the Turkey now. So that's why Turkish people really mixed up uh, who is living in Turkey now. Like mixed up with Eastern Europe, like all this Bosnia, Macedonia, you know, like they mixed up with Serbian people and they mixed up with Arabic people. They mixed up with Asian, Russian. (laughs) Now even uh, so many of my friends, they got married with a Russian woman. Yeah. (laughs) So we're still, we're, we're still mixing up a lot. So they got, they like dark guys with the black hair, but their kids are, you know like look white and uh, green eyes or blue eyes now so we're still mixing up i think that it's interesting because we've been going to turkey since 2017 and we're doing our sixth retreat this year at your place Mm. and i think sometimes from like a western perspective turkey because it's especially kind of known to be more like Islamic now and the government is kind of a little bit more moving towards fundamentalism. But when we're there in Turkey, it it feels very diverse and very modern and very Mediterranean and very multicultural. And I think like partly it's because of where we are on the Asian Especially sea. Especially Chejma, yeah. And it's so close to Greece. But Istanbul also feels very modern and, you know, just like there's so many people from all over the world still going to Istanbul to this day and living there. And it's it's such a I mean, one of the biggest cities I've ever been in. It's so crazy. So it doesn't feel like super restrictive that way. But sometimes from the West, maybe people have like a misimpression of what it's like. Yeah, because uh, the information going on about Turkey is uh, it's totally wrong. So uh, I don't understand why people are doing that because because of the politics, maybe they make Turkey look like really conservative and like really religious. But no, uh, Turkey uh, is the most modern Muslim mm-hmm. country in the world uh, because of our founder of Turkish Republic, uh, that guy, Atatürk, called Atatürk. He was a very modern guy. We had this conversation before, you remember? So the first woman's right for, you know, election right in Europe. Uh, Turkey, uh, Turkey, let's call it Turkey because now we want to call it Turkey. Let me open this also because it's Turkey. Because if you call Turkey, that means only Turkish people are living there. Oh. So it's, that's why we want to call it Turkey because we have Afghan people, it's the Syrian refugees. We have uh, Bosnak people, we have Kurdish people. So Turkey, Turkey is like a mix of, mixed of all these people, all this culture. So that's why we stop calling Tur- Turkey because it's kind of 
uh, not good for the other people who is like thinking about you're Kurdish and <laughs> yeah. they call you Turkish, you know. So you and you can say that I'm not. They they want to say that I'm from Turkey, but I'm right. Kurdish. They want to yeah. say this, okay? I'm not Turkish. They don't want to say this. I agree with them, and I understand understand that. So that's why I'm I'm calling now Turkey. Uh, it's better for that. Yeah. Huh. And yeah, Turkey is not conservative at all because we are really modern. So we pick Muslim. Uh, we are like Muslim, but Muslim doesn't mean that not modern. By the way, if you read the Quran or read things going on in Quran. It always says good things, you know. All the religious books, I think they saying good things, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but depending on how, how you yeah. understand it or how you... Because all the phrases are open. So you can put it in a different way or you can choose in a good way also yeah. to understand it. So that's why, I mean, I don't understand people. The politics going on a lot. And, you know, we are surrounded by, like, Maybe we have like 11 countries around us, you know, mm-hmm. so like so many small, small countries, Russia, like, you know, Bulgaria, Greece, Syria, Iraq, Iran, uh, Armenia, you know, like we have like a lot of countries and a lot of different things going, going on around. So that's why all the part of the Turkey is totally different. So where I live is the westest part of Turkey, of course is way much modern than the other side of the turkeys because of the people's mentality and we are the closest part of the europe so we are very close to europe so of course it's like different people if you go to anatolia they really they can't be more conservative so but still they really nice people they really the hospitality is like going on there also if you go there they're gonna open their house for you they're gonna give you their food they're gonna share their food of course don't go there with the <laughs> bikini you know so if you go there with the bikini it's gonna be not nice for them because their culture is more conservative than the other side yeah so where i live so you can walk in the alleged streets with your bikinis it's by true. the way but if you go to anatolian and the east part people are a little more close to these things you know so like the families they keep their girls for for a while i mean they don't let them to date with the others so their mindset is different so all the countries has different type of kind of things right it's kind of like goa versus mysore (laughs) mysore or if you go to Israel also, I mean, I know, I mean, they, they like totally different. And you can see more religious, conservative Israeli people like with the beer. I mean, if you, you can go like more open. I think it's all the same. If, I think in the United States is the same, no? Mormons, <laughs> they got the Mormons. <laughs> I mean. yeah. Any long hair of any kind in Southern Illinois was frowned on as satanic. And that's very different from Manhattan. Or California. Or California. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's interesting. I was I was thinking about when we met, of course, Harmony, you've been going to Turkey, you know, every year for the past six years. I, I only got to go the one time, I think. Uh, but we met. Yeah, I'm looking forward to you two coming back. I would back, like to course, come back. So that, please. Uh, it's, um, if, if, if maybe this podcast can get another 400 people to come, then we can <laughs> afford to bring me. But I remember meeting you in Mysore and and coming by your home and you had this kind of very lovely custom and manner of welcoming people into your home and feeding them, making sure everyone had enough olives and cheese. Uh, and, <laughs> and this seems to, to have, every time I've heard about you, like, yeah, you're everyone's eating olives and cheese and tomatoes. But if someone asked me, like, how would you describe... Chef Kit, what's he like? What's he do? And it's like, well, I think he has a relationship to the hotel industry, but he's really into juggling. <laughs> and so, like, that's all I really know about you. Like, you, you very much like that's a very kind of Robbie Cavallero manner, where like I don't really know what he does. He's just like a cosmic star child, <laughs> and like that's that's what I know about you. Like, so. 
And he what? does wakeboarding, you water don't surfing. Your, you spend your whole life in Mysore for the last 10 years. What do you do? And you used to be a professional tennis player. Yeah. Professional. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? I, I was born a little lucky because I told you my father was a really successful businessman and he was very close to the president also. And I grew up really lucky because my big brother was not that lucky. So he was bigger than me. So that, that's why my father pushed him all the time to go to business, to take care of the business. But I'm the my father's other side. So he always want me to do sports, is to play as a music uh, instrument or kind of, you know, when you have like five yeah. kids, you want them to maybe all to be different, you know? So he, my father never played tennis. Uh, when I, I remember first day I asked him, can I play tennis? He just said, of course you can play. He bought me the racket. He, he find the teacher and he, uh, went to do the, the tennis course and he, we were going together. He was watching me. He was like, he was playing himself that he was watching me. Like it's me and playing this kind of. <laughs> so that's why I was lucky. He was supporting me all the time. So my brother was not that lucky. My big brother, because he was always, he needs to work. He was very tough for him because he was the first child. So yeah. but he was more <laughs> soft to me. But by the way, I was very good at uh, school. When I was in high school, I was doing like everything perfectly. When they go to school, talk to teachers, teachers were all saying that I'm a good student. I'm like doing very well. So that's why the first thing he was checking those things Then after you can do whatever you want to do. And he was supporting me all the time. That's why I grew up a little lucky. Uh -huh. Then I picked the university also in another city. And he was supporting me. He got me the apartments. He bought me a car when I was 18 years old. So I was quite, grew up lucky person. So that's why yeah. my in interest was always not to work, by the way. So because I always think that when I was kid, so I mean, I don't yeah, need to work. That's I, where I land. I, my interest is not in working. <laughs> I would agree. Because I always think that I knew that. I don't need to work, you know, so it's just, just because my family and I was not a greedy person. I was not looking for, Hey, let me double up all these things and I get more money. And I mean, I was not greedy at all. I, I really like to spend money, but I never like to make money, you know? So yeah. that <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm totally, I feel like not only do we look alike, like almost exactly, but like, our hearts are the same. I just do what my mom says. <laughs> I'm not greedy, but then I just I just try not to work. <laughs> and I it's fine. Mm. We have totally <laughs> the two different character with my brother. So my big brother, he loves to make money and he is always greedy and he always uh, not care about the people around him also like <laughs> I mean, he got the boss mentality, you know, that's how he survived. So that's why he's really successful in his job because he has no mercy. <laughs> so, but, but, but me, I mean, I'm an emotional guy, like grew up playing tennis, like doing this. I am always, you know, when people who works for me and come and say, hey, I'm sick, I always believe them, you know. <laughs> I always believe them. I'm like, okay, you can go home. You know, my brother never believes them. You know, he knows that they're not sick. You know, they just pretend to <laughs> like sick. So I don't have that uh, boss mentality since my childhood. That's why yeah. I couldn't still manage things like that. I'm really unprofessional what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't think Harmony could have employees either, to be honest. I think you're, you just fired someone the other day, didn't you? I just let her go. She was a contractor. <laughs> Brutal, merciless is what it, it sounded like. She was like doing a very sweet, nice lady, liked her really a lot. good work for. Yeah. He's like, Shh, cut her out. <laughs> I was downsizing. <laughs> no, but that's maybe uh, I'm not doing the right thing. So because if you check around the boss mentality, boss mentality should be a little like that. So that's how you, you can survive. Because if you mercy people, that makes you. 
put in a mercy situation also, you know, if you much, <laughs> too much, mercy, uh, they, they can put you in that situation also. So, mm -hmm. but they're not going to mercy you, those people, probably. So that's <laughs> why my brother does the thing, but nobody, uh, not everyone needs to be a boss, right? So no. that's why I pick to not to work too much. I mean, I pick to travel and to be the other side of the family. So we are like a big family. So then I was traveling all my 20s and beginning of 30s. And I was coming back and telling my stories to my mom and my sister and my brother. And they were going to same places that I was traveling because I was, you know, I was the one who is uh, traveling and seeing things and uh, saying to the family. Even I remember when I first came to India, it was 2014 December. On the way back, 2015, I uh, found out that turmeric is a good thing, you know. So, so yeah. they told me turmeric, 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 turmeric. Is everyone's talking about turmeric here? Yeah, it's so, so good for you. I mean, I lost my father because of the cancer. So when they told me that this turmeric uh, prevents the cancer disease. It was very interesting to me. Hey, I mean, what is this cancer? So maybe I can bring this to my mom because maybe she can use it also. So mm. by the time I got that turmeric back home, uh, nobody was using turmeric in Turkey. I was talking about 2015. Nobody was using, even when you go to the shops, they were not even selling turmeric. Then I, I got back home and I brought turmeric to my mom and I told my mom that you have to use this turmeric because it's so good. They tell that this is a carrot. She used only once and she said, hey, this is too much. This makes like really colorful to my food and I don't want to use and it. Hands. Yeah. And, and it mm. doesn't smell good. Also, it smells <laughs> weird. She said, like, uh, them. then in two, three years, all the TV channels, all everywhere, was start saying turmeric, turmeric, turmeric. Then uh, I remember 2019 on the way back, they called me, can you bring turmeric to us? <laughs> so um, wow. you see, that's when you travel, you can find out. I mean, this is a something simple example, but when you travel, you can bring things to your family. I was the, 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 that phase of the family, all my 20s and 30s. I was traveling because my brother was working. My sister was helping him. You know, they don't have much off days. Like, you know, I was off all the time. <laughs> so okay, let me just, let me just, I want to go back to a point that you just said about visiting India for the first time in 2014. I just want to, I just want to pause you right there. Okay. Why would you do that? So, okay, let's uh, begin with this, uh, how I started uh, this Ashtanga journey. So, yeah. I mean, I'm really lucky because what I'm thinking about Ashtanga Yoga is you have to be really lucky uh, to be able to make Ashtanga Yoga finds you, you know? So the thing is, I'm a Turkish guy traveling, partying in my terrarium. I never thought of uh, doing yoga, by the way, and think about like nobody was practicing Ashtanga Yoga in Turkey also in that time. And it doesn't seem like there's anything wrong with your life at all. At this point, like why you usually would like Patanjali <laughs> says you come to yoga when nothing works. You've tried every option. And here finally yoga is revealed. But you're having a great time. Everything's fine for you. I mean, I was really serious with my ex-girlfriend in that time. In 2011, we started dating and we broke up 2014 beginning. So we were living in London together. So she was uh, studying in St. Martin's in art school. She's a Turkish wow. girl, but she was she was very smart. Uh, you seen yeah, her? Yeah, we saw her <laughs> art yeah. and her father's shop. Remember, we went. Yes. And we were really serious. And she was practicing yoga, and she was calling me all the time. We were living in the Camden High Street in a small house, and she was going to Primrose Hill try yoga. Like she was picking wow. from the schedule and she was like going and every time she goes, hey, can you come with me? Come with me, come with me. I was like, hey, I'm doing water sports and I'm doing all these uh, other sports. Then what is yoga? It's just like raising hands. Come on. You know, I was saying it's too easy. It's too easy for me, Annie. You know, it's too <laughs> easy for me. It's nothing. Yeah. It's too easy. <laughs> yeah. Way, far too easy. 
And you'd given up professional tennis by this point? Were you no longer doing that? No, I gave up professional tennis when I was 18 years old, when I first go to university. But the university life, I played also in my university team. I was playing tennis all my life. Then after university, I kept playing not professional as a hobby since I started Ashtanga Yoga. So when I started Ashtanga Yoga, I, I slowly, slowly, I stopped doing all this wakeboarding, tennis, like other things, snowboarding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've seen you, I've seen you water ski, but okay. Yeah. So my girlfriend was, uh, my ex-girlfriend was very into yoga. She was like, she was practicing like every four or five days in a week. And she was calling me all the time. And after maybe eight months or calling me like every day, I, I said, okay, I'm coming with you. Okay. One day we went to one yoga class and she told me, I remember, Hey, here is the schedule. You pick one. Okay. I was checking the tri yoga schedule. It's like all the classes was one hour, two hours, one and a half hour, one hour, 45 minutes. I, I saw one Kiriya yoga. It's just 30 minutes. Okay. Okay, I chose this Kiriya Yoga. I want to go to Kiriya Yoga. She said, oh my, God. oh my God, I remember that Kiriya Yoga was the maybe, that's why it was 30 minutes probably. You know, that was the hardest one for, you know. Like Kriya Yoga. Kriya Yoga. Yeah. Kriyas. So you're doing oh, yeah. like a lot of breathing and like oh, movements. Yeah. Oh my God, that guy was like, we were, uh, the guy's name was, I can't forget, this an Indian guy, like the long hair, it's like Yogi Ashakonanda. So he was teaching on Tiraiga. Yeah, I mean that. I went in cloth, the kind of no, the kind of kriyas, like Yogi Bhajan it's all kriyas. Kinds of kriyas, though. Yeah. Anyway, it was very. I remember for fifty after fifty minutes. So I start sweating like a crazy, and I stop after twenty minutes. I stop. I just like stop. So I said like it's too much for my body. But that day, I. Something came up to my mind. What is this? How come this can affect my body like that? In 15 minutes, I got that much sweat and I got that tired. Normally, I'm doing like so many things. I start thinking about it, you know. So, but mm -hmm. I stopped doing it. So she called me next day. I said, I'm not coming. Okay. And I, but it was always in my mind. And yeah, that. Then we broke up and I was not in a good mood. And yeah. I said, I said, let me travel. Uh, it was 2013 December. Yeah, it was. I and one of my good friend, you know him, Johnny. 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 Yeah. He was in. He was in Miami. So he he lives in Miami. Like Johnny Hag. I mean, he's an American citizen. Also, no, 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 not Johnny Hag. His friend Johnny. Is a Turkish Turkish Johnny. Turkish Johnny. <laughs> Turkish Johnny. Turkish Johnny. <laughs> so so uh, that guy is kind of one of the most important guy for me for the yoga because. He was living in South uh, Beach and he said, okay, you can come and let's, uh, you can stay with me. And I said, let me come and maybe I can go to Orlando also in that time because they always have the biggest water sports fair in Orlando, which I'm really interested in in that time. So I said, let me come and stay with you for a while and I can go to Orlando. I mean, I, the, the goal was just to spend time and just relax a little bit. So... I remember my first week, I was before the water sports fair and I was asking, hey, Johnny, you know what? Because that yoga class was still in my mind and I was thinking, oh my God, hey, maybe you know one place that I can go and practice yoga. He said, hey, very close to this. He was living in the 5th Street and Miami Life Center was in the 6th Street, I think, or 6th or 7th, maybe 7th. Maybe yeah. it, it was old Miami Life Center. So he said, I'm very close by uh, this one. You go and check this. Uh, you don't think about like South Beach, Miami has like all the yoga classes, Bikram, hot <laughs> yoga, that yoga, you know, could be the closest one, the other one to Johnny also, you know, so like Johnny, because not practicing yoga, by the way. So that's why Miami Life Center was the closest one. And he showed me, you can go to Miami Life Center. I said, okay, let's go. Uh, and I signed up and I did one class and I sweat like a crazy again. And I said like, okay, let me do one other class. And, and that teacher, uh, she was teaching uh, Ashtanga 101 or something or introduction to Ashtanga could be. Uh, because they were doing a lot of classes in that time in Miami Life Center. So for the beginners, it's kind of a very nice place to start your Ashtanga journey because 
nowhere in the world I think they have that many Ashtanga classes going on all day long. So I picked the Ashtanga 101 and the Gabriela, she was like second day, third day. She said, start t- saying me, hey, you're very good. You're very good. I don't think in that time I was very good, but she was like pumping <laughs> me, you know, and like, you're very good. You're very good. You're very good. I was like, okay, okay. Let's look. And, you know, as a young man or like, uh, you know, uh, as a single man, let's say, I mean, seeing uh, like so many girls around me trying to do things. And I'm, you know, like I'm like the one or two and the other guys were like almost one or two guy was gay, you know, in the class. I was like one or <laughs> I said, what a nice place. What a nice place. Yeah. What a nice place is like so many girls and, you know. But the only thing is you can't have a drink here, it looks like. Yeah, you know, but <laughs> yeah. you have to you have to you have to sweat, but the other things were like nice to me, Anna. But that was also mm-hmm. kinda, you know, as a single man, it was attractive to me. Why not Anna, doing things with the girls? Kinda, you know, it was it was nice. Yeah. But uh, you know, you have to do this, all this practice, otherwise you can't go to class. So that's right. Yeah. You gotta you gotta stretch your body to meet the girls. Yeah. And then but you can get like a green smoothie afterward and you you said. You can say but it could be your beginning point, but you can keep going every day just to see the girls and just like mm-hmm. be on your mat. Every, they will understand that your reason is that. So you have to do the practice also. In the in the old days, what we would do, and we would do like lead Ashtanga classes, and they would set us up two lines facing each other. And so I was like a twenty one year old in Texas doing Ashtanga yoga in straight lines. I'm like the only guy there, <laughs> and like women when they are when they're putting their clothes on. They're not thinking about how their cleavage is going to look when they're doing a push-up. <laughs> they're thinking about their cleavage when they're standing straight up. You know, that's just how women think. And then they get down on the ground and they're on the ground in like an alligator push-up position. They're not thinking about how their cleavage then looks. They don't <laughs> think about this. If you talk to them, ask them, any woman you meet, what does your cleavage look like when you're down flat on the ground? They have no idea. I have a very clear idea of what they look like, and it is intense. It is an intense amount of cleavage in the Ashtanga yoga class, especially. They should go back to that. They should go back to that style. Some people do. Yeah, some people still do. I think I, when, when I was practicing in Miami Life Center, my class was like that also. My first class. So it was like <laughs> facing each other. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's a draw right away. There's a draw. <laughs> There's a clear advantage to being in this environment. So you were hooked then because you kept coming back. <laughs> but I kept coming back, but I honest, I can honestly say that I really like the sweating practice and challenging something. So I always like to challenge my body since my childhood. Yeah. How can I challenge my body? You know, so, and I found it really challenging uh, Ashtanga practice and seeing being with so many girls around me and doing that challenging thing it was really you know good for me i really liked it so that's why i kept going the classes i didn't go only the reason that girls are around me because i was in the <laughs> miami life miami i can go to miami There's Beach. like three or four more reasons you know <laughs> i mean could be my second reason but <laughs> that's the first one <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, wow. let's say that again. yeah. This podcast is off the hook already. I'm gonna be honest, it could be my second reason, but my first reason <laughs> was the sweating. So sweating kept me. Oh yeah. my god, I never sweated that much all my life doing like so many. I, I was sweating like a crazy. And you know, when you're in twenties, you were partying, you were having drink, you were going out like things like I got a lot of toxic in my body, probably because I was sweating like a crazy, and I it was People are even not getting close to my mat because like whole wet around, you know? So it was mm-hmm. like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Men are famous for that. Yeah. No, but he really sweated a lot. I remember when I first met you in Sarajevo, you were still sweating a lot of sweating was happening. <laughs> like a pool. I mean, I remember the teacher 
the teacher told me, hey, man, uh, I was bold again in that time. Also, I said, hey, man, you have to put something to your head because your hopes are going down on the last stop. And that's how I started putting headband also because she told me, hey, you said you're practicing, you're a tennis player, right? So you should have a headband, you know, so something. I started using that and I used for three years. Yeah, yeah, John McEnroe. And I was changing that headband like three ta- three headbands. Every practice I was bringing with me and I was switching like extra every, headbands. Uh, maybe like extra, extra. I was sweating mm-hmm. like that. Didn't you bring two cloth mats too? I was bringing two, yeah, yeah that was, <laughs> yeah, two. So I remember when I, I started practicing with Saraswati when I first came to India. Uh, okay, there we go. To put a flag right there again, but then why you're in Miami, you you have this wonderful lifestyle in Turkey, but then why then I oh, got to go to India. India? Why? So, yeah, this happened like that because I got the tourist visa when I was in Miami. So like with tourist visa, you can only stay for six months, uh, one single entry. So it's kind of good amount, but I wanted to stay a little longer. So I, I tripped to Jamaica, Costa Rica, and I got back to Miami. And I stayed that year eight, nine miles in Miami Life Center. But it was hard for me as a Turkish person to be in the United States with a tourist visa and kept practicing like that. So in that time, I met Kino and Tim. And uh, Tim was talking to me. He was a very nice guy. So I was bold. He was bold. Maybe he liked me like that. That's why. Yeah, natural connection. I have a natural connection. He was like, oh, it's a cold humor. And I told my story so that I'm coming here that with tourist visa, uh, it's kind of look a little challenging for me to come. Uh, he said, why are you not going to Mysore? I said, what is Mysore? You know, so he said, there is a place where we are going also practicing and uh, everybody who practice Ashtanga like to go to Mysore. You should try. I said, why not? Why not? Then I came back. St- <laughs> I came back straight to Turkey. I got my visa. The visa. It just like 15 days. I stopped in. I made pit stop in Turkey like 15 days. Then I went <laughs> straight uh, back to uh, India. Straight to India. Amazing. After basically nine months of practicing, you were like, "I'm going to Mysore." Yeah, I mean that's uh, team told me to, and he gave he gave me some connection also here that like you know where to go i mean i was really scared because i never thought of going to india because traveling means to go some modern places usually for me and you know to go to U- europe u.s yeah um, nice places british i mean you know like nice restaurants bar you know girls kind of traveling yeah. means girls. like not in e- yeah. yeah yeah i know like I, but, <laughs> the girls are sort of impenetrable in India, is I my mean, experience. You, you Unless know, they're, you know, Western. Mm. I mean, I didn't know that the, that many foreign people coming to India, by the way. So, right. you know, when I first came here, I really surprised to see that many people around the world. I said, what a nice place. And I felt like Every, same like the others. When I was in Miami, it was like, you know, I was the tourist guy, you know, I was coming from Turkey, you know. It was hard to look, be there, you know, for me for yeah. a long time. But here, everybody was saying, even I got the advantage of being Turkey because uh, quite is part of Turkey, similar to this country also. I know these people, they like more similar to my people also, like, like mm-hmm. East part. Yeah. I was like, really, okay, all the local people, they really liked me. And I had really good connection with the local people here. So, you know, it was very charming for me to come here after a while. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I think you fell in love with it because every year you just kept going back and back and back for six months every year. (laughs) I like to skip winter. So I like the, the, the Ashtanga practice. Winter in Turkey is horrific, as I understand. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we, our winter is not that hard, but still, I mean, it's winter. Not, not like Canada, I imagine. You know, <laughs> never mind. Okay. No, no, is, no, no. People were swimming yesterday. I saw in uh, Cheshme. It oh was like God. night, nineteen degrees. So it was kind of they stay for summer, but it can happen 
again next day it can rain can be cold but i know it's like a mellow like we have like really soft winter but still here is better yeah. <laughs> rain can be cold and if it gets colder it becomes the thing they call it snow snow yeah. snow is the word we use this word snow <laughs> when rain gets too cold yeah. <laughs> so then you so so then why did you decide to practice with saraswati what what inspired you to choose mama so I remember Tim told me uh, that you go practice with Saraswati because you are like beginner. So it's better you start with Saraswati. In that time, you remember Mysore was totally different because when I first came here, Saraswati had a small shala and uh, Sharad was teaching the main shala. And the main shala got only maybe 100 people in one time. And it was still like 200, 300 people was coming in a month. Yeah, and it was so hard to get in. Then I saw people suffering to get spots uh, for Sharachi, like, you know, next year and the following years. I said, okay, I want to practice with mama. And when you stick on someone, you don't want to change it easily, you know? So I was really happy with her. I mean, you know, sometimes just the presence... Uh, is enough. So she was not moving mm-hmm. too much and she was not helping, but I was, I was good to see someone really, you know, you know, she got the energy. She still got the energy mm-hmm. probably. I, yeah. I really like her. She's my first teacher kind of, you know, I practiced six years and maybe totally 24 months or something with her, like more than two years. Yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah. My understanding is that she's, she's far superior to Tim. <laughs> Tim Feldman. <laughs> That's what I've heard. I've heard if Tim's out there and if someone wants to mention it to him, <laughs> Russell heard Saraswati was far superior to Tim Feldman. But, <laughs> okay. um, but now you're practicing with Sherrod in his new shala? Now I'm uh, after like uh, night trip to Mysore, finally. Ninth trip, yeah. yeah. Ninth. Finally, I'm with... Uh, Sharachi now. I'm super yeah. happy, by the way. Yeah. I mean, I used to go to his conference. So so my first three years with Saraswati, we had a common conferences. So we had the common chanting. So I was sitting all the conferences next to him. I remember even I was there when you got the certification. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, was, <laughs> I was sitting next to him when you got the certification with Magnolia. <laughs> so I remember he bo- called both for you. I was like, that's how I... Uh, start liking you by the way you were like smiling you know all the time so you were like then i remember i saw you in the store uh, with jeff and the kid and you guys yeah. both say hi to me and he was like i said hey what a nice people these people you know so it was my second year and i was still a rookie here and i was just looking for a little smile you know so because <laughs> because it's hard to get little smiles sometimes in my story i mean you guys know bad ba- oh those jaded older students <laughs> oh, they're terrible clickish better than me so that's you know i what posture are you on yeah, um, yeah, it's still sometimes same, but anyways, I'm already like not rookie anymore. I know what to do. But in that time, I was yeah. like, you know, uh, when somebody smiles at me, I was like getting really positive with all these things. And I was like, oh, she's very nice. And she's very, looks like, and, and certification kind of, you got it. Like, uh, hey, I want to practice with her. Yeah, you know, so, but that year I went to, after Saraswati, I went to, Practice with Monica in Pondicherry oh, for yeah, yeah. maybe six weeks. Then I saw you posted something about Bosnia that like you were, yeah. and you know I wasn't traveling much, so you know I said like let me go to back to Turkey and let's see maybe I can go to Bosnia. That's the easiest kind of country to go because I don't need a visa for Bosnia. Normally I need Schengen visa for Europe, but yeah. Bosnia I'm I was okay. I said, why? Why not? Let me go to Bosnia and practice with her. That's uh, changed like all my life probably, you know. (laughs) So this is life-changing travel for me. Because why it's life-changing travel? Because uh, I remember at that time, let's say the procedure. So so I was really struggling to Mauritius Sanadi, and Adie. And my knee was swallowing all the time. Everybody wants me to pose Mauritius Sanadi. I couldn't even do it. 
I remember first day also she came and I skipped the Maricha Asana day. Maybe you remember because I was I doing remember. Maricha Asana A and B, uh, C, and I skipped the D, you know. So then I went to the Navasana and then she came, hey, why you switch? Uh, why you did the Maricha Asana? I said, I'm scared because my knee, uh, you remember you said, let me, let's try together. Maybe you can do it. You know, she said like, uh, maybe I can help you, you said, you know. <laughs> yeah. I said, but, okay, but I'm really scared. I feel that I don't. Uh, I want to practice next four or five days, and if my knee gone, I can't do that. So I was. She mm-hmm. said, just calm and just trust me. I said, I said okay. Then she put me both sides, you know, the marichas and Eddie. <laughs> I, I was nothing happened during the practice. So, but I had that experience before. It comes sometimes after the practice, you know. Mm-hmm. I was a real, little bit still suspicious. Like, you know, I finished the practice. I went back home. I went back to hotel. You know, I was like thinking, hey, hey, hey. The whole night I was thinking, this knee, what's going to happen to my knee? You right. know, yeah. Did you ice it? Any no, ice? No, no, I didn't no, no you got to ice up. Oh, man. No, 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 no. I was just waiting. I was okay, but I was just waiting to something happen because, you know, it it always was like that. People were putting me my chest and the next day my knee was that big. So then next day nothing happened. I woke up and I went to practice again. Well, she did. We did together again. And it was like six days in a row. You then didn't ice that, at all? No, 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 no. no you know, just... you know what they say in Turkey? <laughs> they say this in Turkey. It's a trust in Allah, but tie your camel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love a tire camel. That's right. You would you ice up. No, he doesn't need to ice up. No, you should tie your camel. <laughs> no, then I mean, you remember I was talking about Turkey all the time, guys. So I think you were also in that year start traveling. It was like first. Maybe you were traveling before, but I after getting certification, it was like first two three years. Yeah, first year, maybe the second year. I I don't know. Then I started traveling more. So you were very into traveling. So you know, so so you start traveling yeah. more after that. <laughs> so then I said, let's because Bosnia has a lot of Turkish things, and it was because because it was a Turkish land, Ottoman land in 15th centuries. So they have like mosque, they have Turkish things, they have Turkish cheese, olives, everything. So I was talking about Turkey and I was talking about Turkish breakfast, breakfast all the time. So I remember we went to breakfast all together with those people. So then I was talking about, uh, hey, you ask me what's your job? I was talking about, I have a small boutique hotel, like my family, but like that. I remember you encouraged me and you said, hey, maybe we can do a retreat together. I said, yeah, I mean, what is it? How can I make it? In that, I never thought of, I was doing a yoga business, by the way. I mean, also like doing something with yoga. She said, let's do a retreat together. I said, I can do it, but I don't have shala. I just have a small hotel that I can fit like maybe 30 people, but I don't have a shala. So you, she said, maybe you can go. You said, you can go and find a place. Maybe we can move there. You were very, uh, you know, you were showing the way how to do things to me. And I was like, okay, let me do that. Then I was in contact with you all the time. And I remember our first retreat was like 29 people, something. Yeah, we had so many people come. And was I on that one? Yeah. That I was, was on the first day. one with so many people. We, had, we were in the gymnasium and it was... And it was what I remember most about it was when- because Tunisia people came. Tunisia people came in the second one, so that's why. Yeah, yeah. they came twice, though. I think twice. Okay, I think yeah. they came twice. They came yeah. twice. Oh, I see. I see. The Tunisian people came twice. I oh, just- the Tunisian people. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was I was alone for that one. I think I don't think he was there for them. You were okay. So you were alone that one. Yeah. But you also yeah. came for the first one. Okay. Yeah. What I what I what I remember most about it is that on the final morning we were going to drive you were going to drive us to the airport it was super kind and it was just we had just had such an amazing experience I was imagining going to you know I was I, th- I thought I was going to be going to like living in a mosque or something but I was <laughs> actually going to the beach and I was spending you know, it was an incredible time. It was just an absolutely incredible time. Eating ice cream. Eating ice cream. It was like, it was just amazing. And then I just, we stopped for breakfast. It was like, we're going to have breakfast on the way. And I was like, oh, thank God. I could really use like 
you know, eggs on toast, something like that. And we get to the restaurant and it's like, nope, it's cheese again. <laughs> it's cheese, cheese and again. olive. It's like, I can't, I can't eat this much cheese anymore. It's just too much cheese. Yeah. And it's like I'll every do. time, every single meal, we're just eating cheese. And I was like, you start to get cheese sweats, and, you know, you sort of like, oh, I'm dying of cheese now. I'm yeah. Terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, I want to talk a little, little more about uh, how um, harmony affected my uh, journey because after that retreat, because normally uh, that hotel belongs to my mom and my brother uh, is the charge of the all the company. He decides everything. So, I mean, I'm okay because he thinks better than me in the business side. I'm always supporting him. So, you know, he's my brother. But... He already, the hotel has already stuff that my uh, brother hired, you know. I was just going that hotel to stay a few nights, you know. Like I was like a guest and uh, that this thing came up to me, the yoga retreat. And we had like 29 people in that time and hotel was full and it was, you know, it was something different. So, and then I start thinking about, hey, maybe this hotel is we can do different something. And, you know, I, I was talking to my brother. My brother was, no, no, no. It's like a hotel because all the hotels around me, they only serve breakfast and they work for the Turkish customers, Turkish uh, guests. Right. So, <laughs> you know, and the hotel makes good money, all the hotels around me. They And if I rent the hotel, the hotel makes good money also, you know, then... This is kind of a challenge to make yoga retreats. I was always thinking that, you know, why I can rent the hotel and I can make maybe more money than doing a retreat, by the way, and without doing anything. Yeah. So, but I really like this practice. And the way she showed me, okay, let me do like the next year also, let's try one more time. The, after the second year, I start thinking about. Uh, transferring uh, this hotel as a yoga hotel. Yeah. But uh, I didn't know what to do at that time because I was only in contact with you and a few teachers and all these teachers are connected with me because of you, because they know you, they trust you. They don't know the Turkish guy. They don't know to what is doing the Turkish guy. <laughs> That's why she's very important because because of her, I got all these people, you know, so slowly, slowly, because they know Harmony. Okay, if Harmony goes, we can go, you know. That's how yeah. it happened. <laughs> right. So, exactly. Uh, that's how it happened. I mean, I can't deny this. So because all these uh, students, they come for the teacher, by the way, first. They're not coming for yeah. my face. So, okay, I wish <laughs> I, they come for me also. But <laughs> Now they're coming for you. <laughs> no, but after seeing, Alachatu, after seeing that uh, this part of Turkey is really modern, people are really yeah. open-minded, the food is delicious, the sea, sun, ancient history, like, Okay, it's worth to come back, you know. So that, that's uh, yeah. they coming afterward like that. I'm happy they like my hospitality also. I'm super happy they like it. But still, they their first main reason is for the teacher. So yeah, yeah. But then you you took your hotel and you transformed it during COVID because no one was traveling during COVID, and you renovated the entire hotel the outside so now it has its own little yoga shala right on site we don't have to drive to the gymnasium anymore <laughs> yeah that, that's called a laruga effect, uh, laruga laruga effect. <laughs> so let's call it laruga effect okay so let, let's call it laruga effect because uh, in pandemic only laruga was traveling so i'm happy she came like maybe three times i think and we did yeah. another retreat another part of the turkey with her but she came three times uh, and she started saying that you don't have a salad because first time we did the, the sports arena again. And I mean, some students also start little complaining about it. But at the same year, Sharachi opened the, his sports arena, but everybody was practicing in, with Sharachi. <laughs> nobody, nobody was. Nobody complained about the airline hangar. Nobody was complaining, but I was uh, bringing people to the sports arena. All the same, most of the shit, they all start complaining. Hey, this is sports arena. When I, we raise our hand, our head is shaking, you know. You couldn't put an airline in it. 
I mean, when they raised their hand on the three corner asana, their head is, was shaking because they are looking high ceiling, you know. So yeah, they start yeah, yeah. complaining, and Lariga also was complaining a little bit, and you know. So then I start thinking about, I mean, what can I do best for this place? And yeah, I mean, it was good that someone was complaining because, I mean, Harmony is always nice. Um, she she always support even. Uh, Maybe she wanted and that time also that I have a shala, but she never said to me because by the way, you know, when you put your mat, doesn't matter where you are, by the way, if you have teacher and you have your mat, that's the practice you can do anywhere. Uh, but at the end, this is a yoga retreat. People wants to have something better and why not? I can also, I said, transform this uh, place and make better version of this place, you know, so it might happen. And I spent the, I made the money that season. I spent all the money that I made that season for this transformation, by the way. I made two roof. Mm. The renovations. (laughs) I I made two big roof and I made the good ground, I mean, uh, the wooden ground and I made the kitchen and, you know, all the garden was totally a different place. It was a rock stone garden and fully open and nothing were there. Then this happened and I transformed and I started, okay, I mean, then I started hosting again. You and uh, Laruga came one more time and I see that this place can work and this is like a good place and people start liking it, you know? So then I said, why not? We can make it like a yoga place here. Now you're now you're a businessman like your brother, <laughs> big boss man. I, I mean, I'm mm. I'm still not a businessman <laughs> uh, because I'm really unprofessional. Yeah, you know, so I don't even have a website that I posting uh, my schedule. Like you know, I uh, if you uh, follow me or teacher, I mean, we are like we, you can come and join our retreats. Otherwise, it's kind of you can check my highlights maybe on hotels highlights and it's like that's it. I don't even have a schedule. All you need is Instagram. You don't need anything. Else. I don't even have a schedule. Uh, it looks like I, I'm not even professional, you know, like anymore, but it's... Step by step, step by step, just like the practice. First the renovations, <laughs> then the website. I like to be this way. So I don't want to be a professional also. I just like, this is yoga because you don't have to be really strict. You know, uh, what I'm doing, we never collect deposit from people because we don't want to push people too much. I mean, I want them to come and really, uh, for that reason, I don't want to push people to come and do something. I mean, I'm really happy when I see them, you know, like this. I think we got engaged in the hotel. Yeah, kind of. We flew from Budapest. That was the trip. Yeah. And then we landed in, we were like, we had breakfast in Budapest and then dinner in. No, breakfast in Turkey in. Oh, uh, did we. In Ishmael, and then we flew to Budapest. Oh, that's right. So we got engaged in the morning <laughs> and then we had an engagement dinner in Budapest. <laughs> yeah. That's what we did. Yeah, man, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, we, in the, if you go up the stairs, the far room on the left, that's where we got engaged. And I've had many birthdays in your hotel. <laughs> yeah, your birthday always like it was June, right? So this coming. Yeah. We're always, I'm always there. Now we're in July though. <laughs> we're in July. So we can have like late birthday party. Uh, where, you know, we'll <laughs> like it. <laughs> when is your birthday? Mine is the September, 7th of September. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. We'll have to next time we'll so plan for your birthday. <laughs> what are the what are the dates for the next for the next one? So the next retreat is July 1st to the 10th. Yeah. 8 days. Yeah, and I okay. think we're maybe half halfway full. So we're, we're halfway get, full. We're getting, we're we're getting, getting there. full. So yeah. there's a cutoff at 400? <laughs> Not 400. No, I mean now we have like maybe 7 people, 8 people already. I think so, yeah. I think we're going to fill up the hotel this year, probably. I think we'll have 15. We can fit 15 in the practice spot. I think 15, we can be like shared room and double room. I think we're going to be full. And I mean, I can, and my students going to come also like two, three yeah. students like daily since in July. Dropping. So it's going to be like 18 to 20 people probably That'd this year. That'd be great. But also That'd like extra... 
you can do extra add-ons and make extra money. So like, for example, you can pay, you can charge extra for Wi-Fi, you can charge extra for a TV, charge extra for the, the bus service. And these things start to pile up on top of each other and you get the deluxe platinum service. And then you can send for Russell. <laughs> it's so funny. We never, I never watch TV when I'm there, even though there's like a TV in the room. I never watch TV. And then those girls were telling me last year that they were like up late at night watching Turkish like television and news. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> yeah. I didn't even know the TV worked, to be honest, like ever in the six years I've been here. <laughs> uh, I'm the same. I don't watch TV. It's the same, but people, <laughs> you have to put the. Yeah, people like watching TV. Turkish people also when they the Turkish I got people Turkish like guests, I mean, they ask uh, for a TV. Yeah, well, they can also understand the language. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so yeah. it makes it a little more. <laughs> I feel like we could spend a lot more time talking about how you started. You learned. You started to learn how to juggle, which I think is really important to you. But I don't want to. I don't want to keep you too long. We can leave a whole nother episode to talk about the amazing juggling that you do, which is phenomenal. But I don't know how that happened. Juggling is my hobby. I still got the balls that we bought from Budapest together. Yeah. I got with I got them with me. Let me show you. Uh, okay. I have my balls. You too. bought them. And did you buy balls also? <laughs> when, oh no, that was Budapest. That was Budapest. Yeah. I was trying to remember. remember? <laughs> oh, look at those beautiful yeah, balls. Yeah, I remember those ones. Those are such beautiful. <laughs> Chef Kit's balls on the film. If you're only listening to this, but you really need to see Chef Kit's balls. <laughs> They're extraordinarily multicolored. He has three of them. <laughs> <laughs> are you going to do a little bit of juggling with your balls for us? Just a little bit? No. no. Yeah. Because... I, if you I learned, come, if you come in July, you can see the juggling. When I learned to juggle, I was I was told, look, any human being can juggle three balls, but we can teach you that. But no, but if you can either juggle three, but if you can juggle four, you're a whole nother kind of human being, and that's you can't teach that. Do you juggle? No, the, if I juggle four, they're gonna ask me, can you do five? So. So it goes like that, you know, when you do three, the the guy who got jealous or who never, because they always looking for a gap, something in your practice, right? So can you do, t- or can you do four? If I do four, what's going to happen? You're going to ask me, can you do five? If I yeah. do five, you're going to ask me, can you do six? It goes up there and people can juggle like 12 balls, like 13 balls I've seen in the YouTube. It's like a crazy. Oh my gosh. Of course, it's like my hobby. I can say I'm like, I really enjoy it, but I never thought of going far from that. I'm just like doing for myself. So this kind of juggling or stick juggling or all these kind of things, by the way, you are doing it for yourself. So where you're enjoying, you're enjoying. So you, the first uh, thing to entertain yourself, if people around you, also get entertained by what you're doing it's fine if they don't it's still fine because i'm doing for myself <laughs> so yeah. yeah it doesn't matter i juggle good or you can only juggle one ball just uh, toss it and hold it toss it toss it toss it someone can come and ask you hey what are you doing it doesn't look even good but I'm not doing for you. I'm not doing, I'm doing for myself. If it doesn't look good, go watch something else. You know? Yeah. So uh, I think jugglers has this mentality, you know, all the jugglers. Mm. So they don't care about the audience. They just uh, have having fun. The first lesson to juggling is you take a ball and you drop the ball. And they say, get used to that. Get used to that. <laughs> is a combination of of acceptance and also one pointed concentration. You yeah. To, you know. Good juggler who uh, knows how to pick up the ball and start again. And does you have to pick up the ball and start again? That's the good juggler, you know. So you you shouldn't give up. So the ball will go down and you will pick up and go again. Pick up and go again. I think there's some metaphors we could there make here is. with yoga practice. Yeah, yeah. You just keep picking just, up the ball and also and you keep trying again. The practice. 
practice yeah. for your own enjoyment, your own self. Yeah, yeah. Someone so, doesn't like it, go look the other way. <laughs> tomorrow, you get up and you go practice again. You try again. Yeah, pick I mean, yourself up one more time. I, if I do, I do in the public. Always, people think that you're trying to showing off something, you know, to people. Yeah. So that's why I stopped doing in the public because here also I'm I'm still juggling here, but not in the public because of people. Yeah. <laughs> I used to paint in public. I used to go out and paint, and people would give me money. That's and I was like, good. no, you no, no. I don't. Don't give me. I'm trying to paint. You're. I'm trying to remain in a flow state. And people were disturbing me with like throwing fucking cash at me. Look, I don't bother me. I'm trying to, I'm trying to do my practice. Here. Mostly I remember when I was juggling in front of the house here. In the city, all, mostly girls, when they passing by, they really enjoy it. You know, they really, but the men's. Oh, uh, no. When they, they just give a weird, weird look. Yeah. You know, that, 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 <laughs> yeah. These, uh, girls usually. It makes girls laugh, you know. So they 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 just yeah. smiling, you know, when they see that. Yeah, they enjoy it when when Chef Kit juggles his balls. <laughs> I understand. You know. I see it. Mm. Well, thank you so much. This is adorable having you and talking to you. And I hope the the retreat fills up, and and then we we can we can bring me too. It'd be great. We'll have to. We have to plan it at a time. When my parents are here to watch the dog, we gotta so. bring the dog, sweetie. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I can't go. No, we the dogs don't like us when we're away. They don't like us. <laughs> so. I think when the time gets close, we can find a way to bring you. Yeah, yeah, here. yeah. And the Turks <laughs> love dogs. There's one thing I know about Turkey: they love animals. They do love animals. Wow. If yeah, you, if Turkish you... people. I think they love animals more than any other. Thing culture country that i have ever visited yeah. yeah yeah absolutely that's i i watched a video on tiktok and i saw some guy trying to take care of an animal in the street some kind of dog and i said oh that's turkey <laughs> and i sent it to chef kit i said is this turkey and chef kit said yeah that's turkey yeah because they love their the street dogs yeah. are so well taken care of and all the cats and yeah it's amazing Istanbul is very famous with cats, yeah. you know. Cats is like a boss in Istanbul. All the shops, they got their own cats and they, the cats, they're just acting like they own the shop, you know. So this is like, it goes on Instagram and I see it as like not in the Turkish uh, profiles. I can see the other profiles, they sharing it and then I can read, I read the comments about it and people... They all say that only Turkey, you can see that, you know, like it's yeah. impossible and nowhere in the world uh, we can't. Yeah. It's worth the trip just to go to see how people behave around animals. Around, and it's yeah. different than anything else in the world. That's another kind of commonality, though, with India. I mean, not so much with the dogs, <laughs> but with the cows. <laughs> if, if the 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 the, <laughs> the dog is equivalent to a cow in Turkey. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Or a cat, right? The dog Dogs comes up to, to the shop. Like he's like, oh, I'll like feed it. I'll feed and water this dog. It's, that's what you do. Just like with a cow goes door to door in India. It's the same. India, you know, all the, here we have street dogs also. I mean, I've seen yeah. this year a few cats also, but they got street dogs. And usually these people also, they like, they feed them. I see, I, I see around them. They feed the dogs people also here. Mm. That's good. But not as well as you do. <laughs> you do a much nicer job. No, Turkish dogs are big. They all have healthy and big. I know. Yeah. They're like big Pyrenees dogs. Yeah. Indian dogs are skinny and you know, I mean, yeah. Yeah, this this year they, they don't look healthy here. So but in it's Turkey, hot. all the street animals are super healthy. Yeah. yeah, a bit hot, but healthy. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. There, There is a really great documentary, though. I forget what it's called, but it is about the Istanbul cats. Mm. Do you know that one? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that one. And this is like getting really, I mean, I, it's going to be a lot of videos in soon about Istanbul cats. I mean, people are sharing a lot of things about Istanbul and cats. 
and because of the cats population cat population in Istanbul you know so that's why we don't have mouse or other yeah. insects coming inside the houses so they protect the houses by the way that's why i think they start letting cats uh, all times because all these people they knew that if cats going to be around so many even you know in the, i have also four or five cats going on inside the hotel so we don't have cockroaches. We don't have any. They they never they can come to the kitchen because these guys are playing with them, you know. So the, the <laughs> Osma, when they see them, they start playing. They bring to me sometimes. Even I remember once uh, Osman, the cat that my favorite cat is, he bring one very skinny small snake. Oh wow! Is my way. I don't know where he found it. Nothing. Maybe he can found outside the hotel also, but. It was like super skinny, small snake. So mm. these guys are protecting anything. They don't let oh. any other animals to get in. So my yeah. my dog That's brought right. me a rabbit head this morning, oh, plus yeah. a skull. Oh, you didn't see the skull? No. The sc- the rabbit ear was attached to the top part of the skull. Oh. That was really friendly, <laughs> and I was just like, "Oh, this is so sweet of him to bring me." Rabbit skull plus ear. How's my kitty doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, 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 I mean, she's so good. I, you know, uh, she got the operation already. Uh, oh, good. So she can give a birth. She's going to have really nice winter. So my guy is there and he's feeding all these cats. I'm looking forward to see them. I miss my mom and my family, but I miss Osman and uh, Julie. Mm. I, I'm, Julie? Calling, uh, I'm calling her Julie. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much <laughs> she was. for this conversation. And we're gonna we're gonna pause here and then and then we're gonna talk offline more about the cats. And I <laughs> okay. just want to thank you. I, I I love you to death. You're adorable. And we're gonna we're gonna keep talking about cats after we push stop. It was what we're gonna do. Okay. And people have to come to Turkey and see Julie. She's yeah, the yeah, best. Yeah, yeah. And then cat. we're gonna push pause now. And Osman. And then the k- people can come and talk to us about cats in in, in Turkey in the Turkey. Okay. In Turkey. Turkey. <laughs> Tur- Turkey. Turkey. Eh? You gotta Turkey-a. stop it. Turkey. 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 Okay. Let's say we're gonna meet on July first to ten. Yes, July first to ten. If you guys wanna catch us, all three of us. You guys should come to Cheshme and hang out with us for 10 days. I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot of fun and you guys can learn a lot of things. Uh, yoga. I can teach some water sports also. Yeah, looking forward to it. Awesome. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Well, that was super fun. And if you are interested in exploring and having even more fun with me in person in Turkey, then I'd encourage you to come put down your deposit, save your spot, and enjoy 10 days with me in this beautiful location in an intimate retreat setting. Just imagine starting your day off with chanting, meditation, pranayama, followed by Mysore style asana or a guided class, having one on one support and adjustments from me, followed by a delicious brunch, a Turkish breakfast with Turkish tea and Turkish coffee, and then time to yourself to go deep to journal or explore the city or take a boat ride to a Greek island, maybe explore the ancient city of Ephesus, or just go to the beach and relax and unwind and suntan. It's so much fun. We have a beautiful, delicious time enjoying all that Turkey has to offer on the Mediterranean coast of the Aegean Sea. And I hope that you'll come and join me. So if you're interested in exploring this with me, come to my all-inclusive retreat in Alachati, Turkey. You can find out more information on my website, harmonyslater.com forward slash yoga dash retreat dash turkey. All the details are there, but if you have further questions, don't hesitate to reach out. DM me on Instagram at Harmony Slater Official, or you can send me an email 
It's all there for you, and I'm here for you as well. So come on and take a beautiful yoga vacation. Retreat with me to Turkey. I would love to see you there. There's a few more spots open, and I hope that you take one of them for yourself. That's it. We've concluded another episode of the Finding Harmony podcast. I just want to thank you so much for doing the work that changes the world, starting with yourself. It truly does make a huge difference. Please make sure you have your automatic downloads turned on wherever you listen so you don't miss any of the upcoming episodes. I have so much more magic I can't wait to share with you. Lastly, if you're on Instagram, I love connecting and hearing from you. So come on over and say hello at Finding Harmony Podcast. And you can also come say hello to me personally at Harmony Slater Official. Thank you again for being here. I cannot wait to share more with you in our next episode.